We finally know who saved Grogu from the Jedi Temple, as revealed in the latest chapter of The Mandalorian, The Foundling. After two years of wondering and speculating, the answer was better than I would have ever guessed. It wasn't Quinlan Vos, not Barriss Afi, it was the sabered hand, Kelleran Beck, which was absolutely thrilling to me. But I know some fans are probably like, who? Don't worry, I'm here to do my thing and explain why choosing him to save Grogu was the perfect choice. Let me first say that Kelleran works because his scenes serve as both fan service and as an introduction to those who have never met him. You don't have to be familiar with the character, but it's one of those moments where invested Star Wars fans are going to feel rewarded. I heard that name, Kelleran, and I perked up. Did they just say Kelleran? Do they mean Kelleran Beck? And then to see those doors open up, it reminded me of Cobb Vance's first appearance in Season 2. Even with rumors surrounding the character's inclusion, I just never really imagined the live-action series would bring in a book character in such a significant role. Well, now they've done it again, from maybe an even more surprising source. Keller and Beck first appeared in the game show, Jedi Temple Challenge, which premiered on the Star Wars Kids YouTube channel back in 2020. Each week, teams of kids would compete to pass the Jedi Trials, and Master Keller and Beck was there to oversee it all. It was loosely set within the Star Wars universe. We didn't know when in the timeline it quote, took place, for example, but none of that was really important. What mattered was that Kelleran was a teacher. He was there to guide and look after young Jedi. One other bit of lore we know about him is that he was likely related to Ahmed Beck, a con man background character briefly seen in Attack of the Clones. Originally, I assumed they were distant relatives, but now that we know they lived in the same era, I like the idea that they were twins. Ahmed's mother probably asked him constantly why he couldn't just have an honest job like his Jedi Master brother. Anyway, both characters were played by Ahmed Best, who also played Jar Jar Binks, and we're going to talk about that a lot more in a bit. But on the Star Wars show, Ahmed said he was given a lot of creative control to make Keller and Beck his own, contributing to Kelleran's history, mannerisms, and lightsaber color. He said he was inspired by his favorite kung fu movie characters and described Beck as the first Jedi dedicated solely to teaching. In Ahmed Best's own words, he sees Keller and Beck as a teacher, first and foremost. That right there, tells me that while, yes, you can consider this fan service, this decision had some thought behind it. Quinlan Vos, Beresafi, several of the other theories thrown around the past two years would have been more recognizable, but if you know Keller and Beck, he makes so much sense. I'm sure he would have known and taught Grogu. Even if he didn't, I think his number one priority would have been to save as many of the younglings as he could. To be fair, that seems to have been every Jedi skull in the temple. We saw that in Obi-Wan Kenobi, and in this episode, four Jedi gave their lives to get Grogu to Kelleran. But the fact that they knew he was their goal makes me think and hope he was just shuttling kids out of the temple. Which brings us to the next reason Beck works so well here, and that's because he fits so well within the series and specifically this episode's themes. There are two parts to the story, and both of them are about protecting the next generation. Bo Katan, Din, and Paz Vizsla all work together to save Ragnar, and Keller and Beck fights to save Grogu. The entire series has continually explored teaching and guiding the next generation as well. Kuwil speaks about reprogramming IG-11 because droids are simply a reflection of those who teach them. Same with children, they're simply a reflection of their parents. Din was violent around Grogu in Season 1, and it caused the child to be violent as well. Now we're seeing Din as a much more thoughtful parent and teacher. So so again, it is important that Keller and Beck is a teacher. But I love that being a teacher doesn't mean he can't absolutely kick ass. Seeing him defend Grogu with two lightsabers was stunning, and it ties back to his nickname, the Sabered Hand, which is another contribution from Ahmed Best for the character. I will say that he stated back in 2020 that Kelleran's lightsaber was purple, we see him wielding green and blue in The Mandalorian, but we also see him picking up the lightsaber of a fallen Jedi. I'm gonna make it my headcanon that he he lost his own lightsaber earlier in the fight and had to pick up some replacements on the fly. No matter what, it was so cool seeing Beck in action. And honestly, that's the real reason I love Kelleran in this role so much. Because of everything it meant behind the scenes for Ahmed Best. It made me feel so good for him, and in ways that, once again, tie into the themes of this chapter. Grogu's flashbacks are introduced by some words from the Armorer. She says, We all begin as raw ore. We refine ourselves through trials and adversity. And if that doesn't describe Ahmed Best, I don't know 
what does. Like I said, he played Jar Jar Binks in The Phantom Menace and beyond, saying he went through trials and adversity is putting it lightly. Jar Jar was hyped up as the first fully digital character in a film, Ahmed himself was praised throughout production, Liam Neeson called his agent and said he thought Best was going to be on the level of Eddie Murphy, and then the movie came out and people ripped it apart and they went after Jar Jar the most. I can't even imagine what that shock and emotional whiplash must have felt like. Look, I'm not saying you have to like Jar Jar Binks, but respect the man who put his heart and soul into the character. I don't want to go too deep into Ahmed Best's personal life, but he has publicly talked about having suicidal thoughts in the wake of The Phantom Menace. I'll link to the video he made about exactly that in the cards, because I think every Star Wars fan should watch it. There are lessons in there the fandom can learn that are unfortunately still relevant today. On the bright side, Ahmed Best has received an outpouring of support more recently. I was lucky enough to be at the 20th anniversary panel for The Phantom Menace at Star Wars Celebration 2019, where he got a well-deserved standing ovation. The fandom celebrates his victories. I remember thinking that it was so nice getting to see him playing a Jedi Master in Jedi Temple Challenge. But seeing him unleashed in The Mandalorian was more than nice. Obviously, I don't want to speak for him, but it felt like a triumph. To have an actor who went through so much adversity for his original role in Star Wars to now play a major Jedi character that saves Grogu from his greatest trial is perfection. And it's his face, not for a cameo in Attack of the Clones, and he's not playing the completely digital comedic relief, not that there's anything wrong with that type of character, but to see Ahmed Best with this look of badass determination swinging two lightsabers around in the protection of life, that's why Keller and Beck was the perfect choice. All those those emotions just hit me at once when he appeared. I love the thoughtful inclusion of an existing character. I love that he is a teacher, and that he thematically fits in service of the story being told by the episode and the whole series. I love that feeling of being rewarded as a fan who watched and genuinely enjoyed all of Jedi Temple Challenge. But mostly, I love seeing everyone online rallying around to cheer for Ahmed Best, because he has always deserved that from us. This is going to be one of those moments of watching Star Wars that I think I will always remember, just like seeing Cobb Vanth. Then and there, I knew I was going to pick up anything and everything Cobb Vanth I could get my hands on. I thought Cobb was a neat character in the Aftermath book. Books, but it's more what he represented to me as a fan that launched him up into one of my all-time favorite characters. The same just happened with Keller and Beck. I can just feel it. He's an all-time favorite Jedi for me now because of this memory that I think I'll have as a fan forever. And just like Cobb Vanth, I'm grateful that his story isn't over. I mean, I'm terrified for how it'll end, but he escaped with Grogu for now. There's more to see and learn, and I can't wait to experience it. But I think those are all the thoughts and feelings I currently have about Keller and Beck as I sit here talking in my Jedi Temple Challenge t-shirt. Let me know what you're feeling about the character in the comments. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel to keep up with all our Mandalorian Season 3 coverage, and consider checking out our Patreon page, where we're releasing video reactions and audio commentaries for every new episode. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.